Xbox Game Pass may be increasing in price sooner rather than later, but what's your limit? That's the topic of today's discussion, so let's dive right in and get to it. Some recent remarks of CEO of Microsoft Gaming, Phil Spencer, have recently brought this topic up. During Wall Street Journal's annual Tech Live conference, he had the following to say, We've held price on our console, we've held price on games and our subscription. I don't think we'll be able to do that forever. I do think at some point we'll have to raise some prices on certain things. He was quick to point out though that the changes wouldn't affect this holiday season because Microsoft wants to maintain the prices that they currently have. Now if I had to do my best guess on what they're talking about when they mention specific price increases, I think that would go toward Game Pass as well as game purchases. Sony along with other major third party publishers have already started embracing the $70 price tag. As for Game Pass, well I think it makes a lot of sense because Game Pass is probably the easiest pill to swallow when it comes to a price increase. There's a reason people call it the best deal in gaming already, and if that deal happened to just get slightly worse, something tells me that not many people would complain. The timing is also kind of key for it, because 2022, let's be honest, for Game Pass in terms of first party output was pretty lackluster. But taking a look at 2023, we have Redfall, Starfield, Forza Motorsport, Minecraft Legends, and that's just the start. And that's without even including the big third party titles arriving on Game Pass Day 1 next year like Wolong Fallen Dynasty, Stalker 2, Flintlock, Arc 2, and much more. As it stands right now, Game Pass Ultimate runs you about $14.99 a month and includes Game Pass for your PC, console, and Xbox Cloud Gaming. Frankly speaking, not a bad price whatsoever, and we do know that they will be releasing a family plan in which you can split the cost with friends and family. Of course, it will cost you a little bit more, but everybody will have Game Pass Ultimate as the standard as part of the family plan. The current rumored price for the US family plan will be sitting around $24.99 a month. That is, if there is no price increase. But for this topic, let's say there is. How much more are you willing to pay before it becomes a question of whether or not you want to subscribe? Speaking for myself here, I find it very easy to justify picking up Ultimate even if it costed double of what it currently costs right now. But I own the console, the PC, and I use cloud gaming. And not to mention, I benefit from subscribing for coverage on this channel. But I do think it's worth talking about those who don't have access to every single thing that the Xbox ecosystem supports with Game Pass. If you don't own a console or PC and just want to use Xbox Cloud Gaming, I really hope that there's some sort of separate option for you. I feel like requiring Ultimate already at $14.99 a month is a lot to ask for for a 1080p 60fps streaming service. Yes, it includes the games, but let's be honest, it's not really up to par technologically with what Stadia provided back then and what GeForce Now provides right now. And I think it would be a much harder pill to swallow for anyone using just the cloud portion of Game Pass to actually justify a price increase. I really do hope that at some point, they'll be willing to just offer a cloud gaming option to Game Pass rather than needing to subscribe for the highest tier. But honestly, with Stadia shut down, Microsoft has even more incentive to not do that sort of thing because it'll push people toward buying or picking up a Series S at the very least. I mean, why not take full advantage of what you're paying for after all, right? But let's say you own a console or a PC. In that case, I think it's a much easier pill to swallow a price increase, and I think you can actually get away with a reasonable amount. I think an additional $10 would be the top range of what most people are willing to accept without batting an eye. But if they can somehow keep it around $5, I think that's the best case scenario where people wouldn't even think much of it. Now I know I said I'd be willing to pay double, but I know that I'm in the minority in that situation, and that's for my specific use case. I think ultimately, the value that Game Pass currently provides is pretty astounding and it's really hard to compete. PlayStation Plus, its closest rival, which I'm also subscribed to, is a pretty solid offering, but it's hard to deny that they lack those solid day one releases. And I don't just mean day one in terms of first party output, but also third party output. And I think for that fact alone, it's also easier for Xbox to get away with a price increase to put it even further past the cost of PlayStation Plus Premium. Interestingly enough, I do also have to mention that it does seem like Microsoft is starting to target PC gamers more and more with their subscription service. And that's because there's a lot of room to grow in that sector in terms of subscriptions. League of Legends, Valorant, Teamfight Tactics, and Legends of Runeterra are among some of the most popular PC games. And the fact that they managed to strike a deal with Riot Games to include some major benefits to those who play those titles is a really, really big deal. But now I need to pose the question on to you. 
Let me know whether you play on console, cloud, or PC, and how much more you'd be willing to pay for your subscription to Game Pass. And don't just consider what it is right now, but consider what it's going to be over the next 12 months. Let's also not forget that the Activision Blizzard deal is currently in the works, and if that were to pass, you can also expect heavy hitters like Diablo 4 on Game Pass. At the end of the day though, I think everyone understands that Game Pass can't remain the same price as it is, and it's only a matter of time before we see some sort of price increase, especially after Phil's latest comments. Now if you enjoyed today's video or found it helpful at all, be sure to hit that like button as it really does help the channel out, and if you're wanting more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. As always, I hope you have a great day, thanks for watching, this has been The Virtual Cloud, giving you the latest and greatest on everything cloud gaming related, and until next time, I'll catch you in the clouds.